to graphing rational functions today we are going to graph this rational function if you notice there are no instructions so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get started and it is always going to be these letters right here watch how fast I write these now if you remember those letters in that order I can't do too much with the top, but the bottom is going to be x minus 2, x plus 2. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to determine if there's any holes. And the only way I can really tell if there's any holes is if a factor on top and bottom cancel out. Nothing like that happens here, so we're going to write none for, fat, for holes. The next part, Flanders has viral, that really stands for vertical asymptotes. Remember, that reminds me of a down arrow to go down below the fraction bar to find my vertical asymptotes. I have two vertical asymptotes. I'm going to have one at the positive 2. I'm going to have one at the negative 2. Now, remember, both of these have a degree of 1. 1 is an odd exponent which means these are going to have opposite behavior around those vertical lines. So when it comes to the vertical asymptotes, you're always going to write either the word opposite or the word even, always on this part. All right, factoring holes, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. This is my favorite part because it's a fight. It's a fight between the degrees of the top and the bottom. Who will win? Who has the most degrees? There's not even any degrees in the top. So who's going to win? The bottom. Good. Every time the bottom wins, it is always y equals 0. All right. Next, I will find my x-intercepts, which are zeros. Those come from the top. But there's not any x at the top, so there's no x-intercepts. So let's write none. And then for the y-intercept, you just plug in 0 to where you see the letter x and solve. So this is going to be 2 <coughs> over 0 minus 4. So that's going to be 2 over negative 4, which is negative 1 half. And then I would graph. And then we're going to write domain. And I'm going to write domain before we graph because I know what to block out. I block out the vertical asymptotes x cannot equal these. So the domain is going to be negative infinity to my lowest vertical asymptote, which is negative 2. We're going to pick right back up on that negative 2 and go to the next <coughs> vertical asymptote, which is a positive 2. And then that's the last asymptote. So we're just going to wrap it up from 2 to infinity. <coughs> Any questions on that? It is time to graph. So look, we're going to sketch an x and y axis. Y'all better spread that out. Don't draw a little baby graph. You have paper. Use your paper. Make that big. You don't want to try to scrunch all this stuff in a little itty bitty space. Now that you have drawn your x and y axis, what do you do? You go right back to this and start all over. The beautiful thing about this little sentence is everything that gets done in red is first. So if you have a red pen, thank you so much for using it for vertical or horizontal asymptotes. If you do not have a red pen, will you at least use a different color? If you do not have a different color, then you better make sure I can tell exactly what you're doing without any second guessing. So I would go back to the top and I would start plotting my holes in red because it's a discontinuity. I don't have any holes, so I'm not going to plot any holes. But I do have two discontinuities right here. Remember, these are infinite. These are going to occur at a positive 2 on the x-axis. I think 2 might be like right here. So I'm plotting this vertical asymptote x equals 2. I'm going to label it. <coughs> I'm also going to remind myself that it has opposite behavior. I am not drawing a single thing on here that is not required of you if you want full credit. 
So make sure you label x equals 2. Make sure you label as opposite behavior. Remember, that's not the only one, though. We also have one of the negative 2. So kind of estimate kind of equidistant where negative 2 would be. So x equals negative 2, and it's also opposite. And then I have a horizontal asymptote, still a red pen. Horizontal asymptote, y'all, that's stuck right here on the x-axis. So make sure you bold it out. Like draw your dashed line a little further and label it y equals 0. Make sure there's no guessing. That's one more reason why you need to use red. After that, you get to put the lid on your pen because you're done with the red ink. Now, when we plot the regular dots, choose whatever other color you want to choose. From here, I would go ahead and plot x-intercepts, which would be right on this line, but I don't have any. So let's go ahead and plot the y-intercept, which is barely below the origin. And that is all I need to graph this. So remember, the x-intercepts are the only way a graph would go to the other side. So if there's a graph down here, then it's stuck down here because I don't have any doorway for it to go to the top. Also remember, how many ever number of vertical asymptotes you have, you add one to make sure you have three branches. I have two vertical asymptotes. There's three pieces to my graph. There's going to be a piece in this section, a piece in this section, and a piece in this section. I always start where my y-intercept is. It is only going to stay below the origin. I said y-intercept. Yes, y-intercept. That is all that branch can do. Remember, branches hug asymptotes. All right. So now I'm just going to follow my little hint that I did at the beginning. I reminded myself this was opposite behavior. The opposite of down is up. So you have to draw an up arrow next to the up arrow on the other side of this red line. Now if you notice, there's no doorway for this graph to go down to the other side. So all this branch can do is hug the asymptotes. Same on this other side. You have a negative 2 here. Remember, underneath negative 2, we reminded ourselves it was opposite. What's the opposite down? Up. you got to draw it next to the up arrow. So this one is going to look like this. And that's that graph. Do you guys have any questions? All right. I'm going to keep going because the more I do with you, the faster you get on your own. So, if you could please copy this down. <coughs> and then, Flanders has viral herpes yet gross. Can you remember what those letters stand for? Write that on the side of your paper. Okay, here we go. What's the first letter, guys, of the little saying? F. Then what? H. Yep. There we go. All right. So F stands for a factor. The bottom's already factored, but not the top. So this is going to be X minus 3, X minus 2. Remember, they have to multiply together to make a positive 6. I'm just going to recopy the denominator. Factoring is done. Are there any holes here? No, there's nothing identical, so let's write none. Vertical asymptotes. Oh, yeah, you have two of them this time. 
you're going to have x equals 1. That has an even exponent, so this has to be same. Remember, you only write same or opposite on this line. We're going to have x equals negative 2 for this, and this is opposite behavior for this one because it just had an exponent of 1. My favorite part is the fight between degrees. Where are most degrees, top or bottom? Indeed, the bottom one, it's y equals 0. All right, so speaking of zeros, we actually are going to have 2 here because we have x's in the top. We're going to have a positive 3, 0, and it has straight through behavior, so I'm going to write a S. My other one is positive 2, 0 with straight behavior. So please remember, this is something that kids kind of get confused about, so that's why I keep on that. This line right here, where you wrote the letter V, you are only writing same or opposite. Down here is where you write things that you already know, straight, concave, and tangent. Straight, concave, and tangent goes here. Same and opposite, go up there. Okay, moving on to the y-intercept. We're going to plug in 0 and just do the order of operations here. That's going to be a negative 3 times a negative 2 on top. Underneath is going to be a negative 1 squared, so don't forget about the exponent, times a 2. That math turns into a positive 6 over a 2, so the y-intercept is 0, 3. I'm not going to graph it yet. I'm going to go ahead and knock out this domain because I always forget domain. Domain is always going to start at negative infinity up to your first uh, lowest vertical asymptote and hole. We don't have any holes today. So we're going to block it out at negative 2. Pick it right back up from negative 2 to your other vertical asymptote of 1. That's the last 1. So that's going to be 1, 2, infinity. Any questions on that? Let's sketch an x and y axis. Space it out. All right. Red pen every time. Taking my lid off my red pen. Here we go. I don't have any holes today. I have two vertical asymptotes. I'm going to go ahead and plot the one over here on the left side of the origin. I'm going to say negative 2 is right around here x equals negative 2, reminding myself it's opposite behavior. And guys, I don't care if you label this stuff at the top or the bottom. I don't care if you have one of them at the top and one of them at the bottom. You just have to have both of these somewhere. Same with the positive 1. Let's say positive 1's right here. x equals 1, reminding myself it has same behavior. One more thing with this red pen is the horizontal asymptote, which is stuck on that x-axis, so make sure that's bolded out so the teacher will for sure know you know there is a horizontal asymptote right there. And that's it. I'm going to put the lid on my pen because I'm done with the red stuff. Time to plot some dots. We have three dots that are for sure on the graph. We have a 3, 0, which I'm going to say is right here, 3 on bottom, S on top. I have another x-intercept at a 2, which is going to be right in between these two guys. So 2 is going to be right here, s on top. And then let's plot our y-intercept, which is above the origin. That's everything I need. Always look at the y-intercept. Where is the y-intercept? It is above the origin. Are there any doorways here where it's going to be below the origin? No, it's not. So the branch starts on the furthest asymptote, hooks over to cross it, then goes back and hugs the other asymptote. So once we have the middle branch, the rest is going to be a piece of cake because we wrote these words at the bottom. So up here, if this is a up arrow, and I reminded myself it's a down arrow, then I'm going to have a down arrow right here. And all this side can do is do what it does which is hug the asymptotes. Over here, we have the same. So if I drew an up arrow on that side of the vertical asymptote, it is an up arrow on the other side of the vertical asymptote. So look, this is going to hug the asymptote. Then it's going to curve back over, and it has to cross through to the other side. We have to see it down below because it's not tangent. 
But then it hooks back up really quick because it has to go through three. So hook back up, go through three. Make sure you're on the other side. And look, y'all don't draw a parabola. Don't draw that straight up. Remember, you have a horizontal asymptote right here. So once it goes above, it's going to flatten back out and hug that asymptote that we had in the beginning. Any questions on this? Let's keep rolling. They're all different, so lots of practice. Next one. Please write this down. Is this factored or can we factor this? It's already factored, guys. Already factored. So now what we're going to do is we are going to address any holes. Are there any holes on this graph? Mm-mm. You have to put that one here. So there are no holes, so let's write none. And now the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to identify the vertical asymptote. So x equals 2. And remember, only opposite and same go on this. I know this is opposite because it has an odd exponent. My favorite part is the fight. Who is going to win the most degrees on number three? Yeah, I mean, it's fine that the top won. But when the top wins, you have to do extra work. You are going to have to divide because this changes to an oblique asymptote. All right, when we divide, it's the top divided by the bottom. The bottom is ideal for synthetic. So I'm going to change the sign and draw an upside down division box. Uh, for my leading coefficient for my quadratic term, that's a 1. This would be a, const, a linear term. This would be a constant term. However, in this class, you stop after you have those two blanks filled. You always stop right here because the first one is your mx, your slope for your linear term. This is That's your b, nice. which is your y-intercept. So once you stop doing it twice, don't even worry about the rest of it because it doesn't matter. You have everything you need. So we're going to bring down the 1. 2 times 1, of course, is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2, and that is it. Your oblique intercept or your oblique asymptote is y equals 1x, which is just x, plus 2. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at our zeros. Our zeros come from the top. That is going to be at the origin, remember, because it's a single x. What kind of letter goes next to this? C, S, or T? So what? For the zeros, what would you label this? It's tangent. Because mm -hmm. it's raised to an even exponent. All right, next one is the y-intercept, but we just wrote it, so I'm just going to recopy the same thing. All right, let's go ahead and talk about domain. Remember, we have to block out x equals 2. That's the only thing we need to block out. So this is going to be negative infinity to 2, and then from 2 to positive infinity. Let's graph it. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch an x and y axis. Spread this stuff out, guys. You only need your red pen for two things. You're going to need your red pen for your vertical asymptote of x equals 2. Do not forget that it has opposite behavior. <coughs> and then, guys, let's talk about this oblique. Remember for the oblique, remember the second number is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 2, which means it's going to be two places above the origin. And is this slope right here positive or negative? Yeah. So guys, just 
kind of estimate where 2 is and then just make sure you draw a dotted line that has a positive slope. Remember, all of this stuff is just a sketch. Go ahead and label it. Y equals X plus 2. I'm done with my red pen. I'm putting my lid on it. I only got one dot to plot. The only dot I can plot is at the origin. Label it T. And then, guys, it's either going to be an upside down looking U or a right side up looking U. There's no way it's going to be right side up because it would blow up all of this asymptote stuff up here. So it's going to be a branch that hugs it, bounces off the origin, and then hugs the other vertical asymptote on x equals 2. Don't forget, you had one asymptote, which means you have two branches. Go to the opposite side of your x equals 2. Draw an up arrow because you also have a little baby branch at the top. And that is it. Any questions on this one? I got one more for you guys. I'm going to ask you to do this on your own. Please write this down. 